think so. Sure. I think where well, okay. okay um, so uh, well uh, normally I was filming myself in the camera but now I can <laughs> no. so well uh, Jeff and Carol can you present yourself very shortly your age uh, what are you doing in your life and, uh, and yeah, what are you living in Seattle uh, well, we live on Mercer Island, and I am a retired school teacher. I taught art to elementary students for the last half of my career, and um, I'm in my early 60s. Okay. Yeah. And I'm changing my life direction to follow Carol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, I'm trying to finish my work of being an inventor that started the Aura Health with products that I invented and uh, doing some other inventing. Good. Okay, let's come go to the first question of the interview. Is um, which do you think is the biggest problem of the world? You can answer different answers. So, uh, well, I would clarify the question a bit. Are we talking about oh, the people? Wall, let's say of humanity. In those yeah, of humanity or, or the earth itself. Um, I think humanity is a better focus. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest problem of humanity is since the beginning of human culture 50,000 years ago, superstition including all religions. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of um, well, I think that I'd take a slightly different tact. I think that a lack of education is uh, the biggest problem that we have. And of course, that would include um, education about reality, but also just education in general about how things work and how life works. There's so much superstition mm -hmm. in the world. Good. How so for each answer, uh, how do you think this problem can be solved? So in the case of superstition, how this mm, could be solved? No, you, so what do you think is... <laughs> education. Education, yeah, okay. I, I, I think education is the highest priority for humanity. Mm -hmm. And the lack of education then, how you can solve it? Uh, recently, some uh, leading people in the field have suggested that the key to education and the key to improving uh, culture all over the world is educating females mm -hmm. because when because they pass it on to their children more than men do. You kind of, what do you, you what do you think uh, it can be done to improve education? Well, I think that the education needs to be free and public, mm -hmm. and uh, because I in order to have a, a clear message coming down and you know really you really need a, a middle class kind of a society in order to have the ability for people to have education um, have the time you know to take to learn things uh, an awful lot of the places in the world where people are working so hard just to eat mm -hmm. um, it's really harder for those families to have time and, and resources for education. So, mm. and uh, personally, what can you do uh, yourself to improve or to solve this problem? So, for example, in superstition, what do you think you can do personally to to improve this problem? Um, well, on a big scale, the improvement, as Carol was saying, is improving the economies but you, of you, all countries. Yeah. You, you personally? And, and the economies are improved by increasing productivity, mm. and productivity is increased by inventions. Okay. And kind of what do you think you can do personally to... On uh, a personal you? level? You know... Um, well, perhaps you try it in the... Yeah. while you are teaching? <laughs> well, of course. I mean, I... When I was teaching, I had an opportunity to be with a lot of students being the art teacher, and I did work to combat some of our more common myths, um, try to get people to think clearly. It's very difficult to, to have a global impact um, as, as an individual. You know. 
I, I think that in some ways what we do here with, with the couch surfing, and um, also I, I go on uh, groups of Friendship Force members, which is meeting with people and talking one-to-one -one is certainly a way of educating people. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a pretty small drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. It's okay. a very complex, difficult problem. Okay, let's go to the next level of uh, questions, so it's more locally. Um, so, in your region or country, uh, which uh, could be the biggest problem? Of US or Washington, but let's say US. I think that our biggest problem is, is uh, at this point, our political arena is so polarized and our government is not getting a lot of work done that needs to be done. Um, people are retreating to very small positions that are very polarized and uh, uh, I think it goes back to the education and the superstition and the religion and, and those things um, <clears throat> instead of bringing us together are <clears throat> pulling us apart. Um, yeah, I think that uh, because religions all disagree with each other, it tends to create separation between people when they have different religions. And uh, that people perpetuating religions from parents to children keeps separation among people and keeps suspicion among different people. And uh, that American politics is unfortunately very captive to the suspicion of other groups that is promulgated by religion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that during that the uh, Bush presidency was infected by a very polarizing Christian view of things that made foreign policy worse um, and, uh, and made domestic politics more divisive. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Take, so you were saying the, the, main, the main problems, you believe that there are in the US, um, about the poli po polarization of politics. So, what, which do you think could be the solution to that problem? <laughs> Again. Well, I think we get around to the same thing, is to take the religion out of politics. You mm -hmm. know, to have people um, voting on the basis of, of what's intrinsically right. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what everybody would agree is right. Um, there's just so much... I guess that it's hard to come to agreement on, on a lot of the things, but it's a hard problem to solve. I don't think there is any short-term solution. Mm -hmm. There are only long-term solutions, and that's education. And you personally, do you think you can put the drop on that to solve your problem? Well, you know, we try. I mean, we, sp uh, we speak up when we're with people, but, um, you know, not contemplating a national campaign of any kind, you know, <laughs> but um, I guess living our lives as, as positively as we can and um, having positive interactions with people mm -hmm. is the best that we can do for now. Good. Okay, let's go to the next level of questions. So we Talk, I ask you globally, then regionally. Now, personally, I'm not going to ask you about your problems, but <laughs> are you happy? We're very happy. Were you very happy? Yeah. We are very happy, but you know, we're newly into this. We've only been together for two years, and so that's a really nice part of relationship is the, the newness in the beginning. But probably in 10 years, we'll be saying the same thing. And maybe 20 years as well. That's the prediction. <laughs> Good. And the next question is, how could you be happier? If he would get done with his job and, and be more able to travel, that would make me... For you? The same. Okay. <laughs> Good. And the last question is, which do you think is the secret of happiness? 
I think the secret of happiness is, is being able to accept life as it happens mm-hmm. um, and to, to find the happiness, the positive things that come your way. I mean, life is not always full of fun and interesting things, but I think that you can learn to see the good and that makes you more happy. You, Jeff, please, something. I agree. Accept life as it happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that people who are unhappy, uh, either they make themselves unhappy or their family makes them unhappy. And nobody needs to make themselves unhappy or make their family members unhappy. It's, it doesn't help anyone. And. Uh, But even, you know, in the middle of, of whatever happens, we can look out and see a, an American bald eagle, and that's a really positive thing. And I uh, have to look for little things sometimes, but yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, thanks a lot. Mm-hmm. That's all.